Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video and today we're talking about the seven things that need to stop happening in regards to travel photography. Number one, relying on the status quo or going up to, let's say it's a famous waterfall or it's a mountain, boom, taking the photo at eye level and because it's so beautiful, for example, let's say somewhere in Iceland, that typically it's a great photo. Now, let's try and be creative and take it from a new, different perspective. For example, put the drone in the air or use a long lens, compressing the subject and the background together or use a wide angle lens with the details in the foreground. Whatever you think, try and get creative, switch it up. Now that is not to be confused with copying others' photography. Copying others' photography or getting inspiration from other people's photos is completely fine. You just don't have to post them every time you do so. Think about learning other things, weightlifting, music, mindfulness. We copy the pros, we learn from them, we absorb, and we recreate. You understand what works for you, and then you go from there. The same goes for photography. You figure out how they took the shot, what framing they used, what settings they used, editing, heck, even by their presets. First, you understand how the photo was created, then you can have the freedom to recreate something yourself. All right, now this brings me into mistake number two, and that is at the other extreme, and that is to avoid touristy spots altogether. This is something you definitely should not do because it is touristy, for a great reason. There's probably some amazing landscape or historical significance behind whatever people are coming to see. But that just means there needs to be a little bit more planning or time involved. So take 30 minutes, walk around, do some hiking, and then you'll find the spot that you need to get the amazing photo. Here's an example of a photo I took in Pai, Thailand. We went to the sunrise spot. There was probably 50 to 70 people there all watching the sunrise. But we just walked around the area, found these wildflowers, and turned out to be an amazing photograph. Travel photography mistake number three, and this can be applied to kind of all photography with the subject in it, and that is when your subject is looking the wrong way. For example, if the subject is on this side of the frame, you don't want them looking this way because we don't know what's going on over here. You want the subject looking where there is space. I'll show you a few examples of some travel photos now. So the edges of the frame provide these imaginary walls. Don't box in the subject the wrong way. So while we're on the subject, I just want to transition into something that kind of I see a little too often, and that is when people are looking too fake or posed and staring blankly into somewhere that just doesn't make sense. So when you hear people say, oh, I don't know how to pose for photos or I don't know what to do, you don't always need to be posing. Just look at the interest piece in the photo, whether that's the mountain or the Taj Mahal, or you can look in the lens or the light. And if you don't wanna do that, then try and go for a candid photo. Do what you'd normally be doing and have the photographer take a bunch of photos. Basically just try and appear natural and not too posy, for lack of a better word. All right, travel photography mistake number four, and I thought this one was quite obvious, but I continue to be proven wrong. Whenever I go to a place that's more popular for sunset, and that is leaving after golden hour. Now golden hour is the last hour of light where the sun is dropping just before the horizon. And what I always see is as soon as it's gone, people get up and then leave. And that is mind blowing because blue hour is when you get the best reflected light when the sun is down past the horizon and it's lighting up and burning the clouds in the sky. I thought this was obvious, but I continue to see the majority of people leaving after the sun has dropped behind the horizon. Mistake number five, and that is messy backgrounds or horizon lines going into people's head or trees growing out of heads. So you just want to make sure that the background is either isolating the subject or framing the subject and just not messy and drawing the eye away from the subject. Mistake number six, and that is carrying too much gear. If you have a big drone or you have more than one camera, too many lenses, that is just a huge mistake and you won't be enjoying the activity that you're going out to do, whether that be hiking or cycling or something along those lines where you just want to enjoy the experience for what it is and not have to worry about a sore back or sore legs, just too much heavy gear. Stay small, be minimal. If you want to look at the gear that I have in my backpack, I'll put the link up here right now. You can check that out if you want. Photography mistake number seven, and that is over and under editing a photograph. Firstly, we all see photographs that just have saturation bar going way too much. 
or we see far too colorized or HDR or just fake in general and doesn't look good. So cameras these days are designed so that you can perfect them in post-processing. Shoot in raw, you can shoot a little underexposed so that you can bring out all that information in post-processing. If you're still new to editing, there are so many tutorials on YouTube like my Lightroom tutorial playlist right here. So check that out if you need help. But yeah, make sure you're editing your photos tastefully. For example, portraits need to be mild and light, whereas landscapes can be bold and contrasted a bit more freely. And the last mistake is don't take yourself too seriously. All right, now this is kind of a joke, but I do come across the odd gear worshiper or someone who thinks they're just really good and it's brutal. Oh, hey man, how's it going? What camera are you shooting on these days? Oh yeah, well, I got the Mavic 2 drone. It's sick, yeah, it's sick, yeah. Freaking sick. Yeah, yeah, me and Chris Picard are probably gonna go shoot next week. Yeah, yeah, we know each other now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, anyways, it's good to catch up. Peace. No one likes an ego. I guess that goes for everything in life. Now a quick word from the sponsor of this video and that is NordVPN. So there's three reasons I use NordVPN. One, I can safely and securely do my online banking, whether that be in airports, hotels, or cafes without the worry of people hacking into my stuff. Two, I can stream with ease. For example, American Netflix is the best. So I always just set my VPN to America and I can watch all the best stuff. And three, freedom of web search. Some social media platforms are blocked in certain countries, so I just select a different country and boom, I had that freedom. So check out NordVPN for super cheap rates below. All right, that's it for the video. Smash like, notification bell, and see you next Monday, bye.